number 38. So we stopped the lect previous lecture with the topic of aramana rasa, <coughs> the flavor of the object. So according to it, according to tradition, every object has a certain flavor, in with flavor. So when the mind is uh, cognizing an object, it becomes the Vedana of the mind, the so-called uh, mentality, so-called Vedana, becomes sensitive to this flavor of the object. So we play, feel the objects as pleasant, unpleasant and neutral. Uh, a student also asked a question during the uh, break. Now we mention uh, pleasantness and unpleasantness. It's an inbuilt quality and for that the tradition brings, the argument of the tradition is during the Vipaka Chitta Chetsikas, we don't have our influence like ideologies, emotions, wisdom. So it has to, the Vipaka Chittas naturally observe the objects as they are. So for example, Chakuminyana, then we have the Javanas, then for example we have Jimha Vinyana, Javanas, Pai Vinyana, Javanas. I'm not drawing the entire detail, right? Some particular something that you know. So these are the part of the process. Then, this is the Javana process. So at the Javana process, whether the object is good or bad, how we perceive it makes the uh, change. Like for example, a very pleasant object can be considered as very bad and someone can get angry because of certain reasons, maybe because of our mood, because of our culture. There can be various reasons for this, right? For example, uh, in some countries, if you touch the head of a person, this is considered as very, very pleasant gesture. But in some countries, it's an insult. So the same thing, it's like cultural influence is also there. So now, the thing is, the argument of the tradition is, the objects, these chittas, the chittas, they take the actual nature of the object. But this also is under certain criteria. For example, one thing is the sensitivity upon which the object strike also decides what kind of a taste will get manifested. The pleasant object, for example, if you take uh, the pleasant cloth, a very soft cloth, this robe is quite soft, <laughs> so soft cloth, if you take a soft cloth, this will bring lots of pleasure when you touch with your body. But unfortunately, today morning when I was getting great dressed, when I was wearing my robe, this robe hit my eye. This actually happened before this class. It was giving a real pain and <laughs> it just touched softly. But it gave a, a very bad pain that I felt how fragile I was. So the same cloth which brings very real blissful comfort to your body, when you touch in the thing, close your eye, there is a sense, body sensitivity in the eye, which will become a terrible pain, right? So the same object, how the object is manifested, the Aramana Rasa is manifested, depends on the nature of the sensitivity. Because this too sensitive, this sensitivity is depending on more fragile great elements, right? So this sensitivity in the body is depending on more harder or gross great elements. So it brings a pleasant feeling. So likewise, the nature of the sensitivity, base of the sensitivity, also gives, makes the how the aramana rasa get decide how the aramana rasa get manifest. Another thing, weather conditions, cool water in summer, it's a very gives a very blissful feeling to your body. But think about when the same, uh, temperature is zero zero, <laughs> the same cool water. <laughs> Even you don't want to look at it, you don't want to touch it, it, gives a, it torments your body. So the same aramana, depending on the other conditions, it gives a different feeling to your body. So likewise, even to the vipaka chittas, aramana, when the aramana rasa is manifested to the vipaka chittas, there are still some conditions to be considered. But the thing is, aramana is the Aramana Rasa, the way of tasting the Aramana Rasa is not influenced by our emotions, 
with our ideas, with our preferences at the level of Vipaka Chittas. Right? At the level of Vipaka Chittas. There is a, another point that we should emphasize regarding the Arambana Rasa. And uh, the thing is, <laughs> this, this topic of saying that all the objects depend on, uh, has their own inbuilt nature, is what, what I discussed is within the tradition. You can ask many objective questions regarding this matter in different angles. But what I wanted to say was, according to the tradition, within the tradition, they, had, they accepted the idea that the objects had an inbuilt quality of good and bad. And this is also, I, when you read the literature, you find Buddha was also in such an uh, idea that he de defined objects as good and bad, ultimately. He could define the objects good and bad, ultimately. That's how we feel when you look into the, uh, look into the literature. The relation between the mind image and Aramana, Rasa. Now, we also mentioned that uh, in the subjective experience, we define the object, two aspects of the object, as in the mind image and the object of reference. They are not two things, they are the same object, two aspects of the object. And we said Sabchitta Chittasikas, focusing on an object, Aramana. We call it object of reference. And we also have a certain mind image, idea, idea of the mind about the object of reference. About the object of reference. Or sometimes this object of reference may not exist. It's just an idea there. Just, just an idea. Thinking that there is such an object. So anyway, it's an idea. So this, as the one student asked, is this a concept? No. It's not always to be a concept. Sometimes when you are focusing on ultimate reality as an ultimate reality, this is an idea about an ultimate reality. It is not a concept. Concept means looking at the ultimate reality, you create a new object like a chair, man, something like that. It is a concept. Thinking an idea about ultimate realities is not a concept. It's referring to ultimate realities. This so when the, as the object is the entire thing, if you want, you can say it's ultimate reality. But if you distinguish clearly, this is the ultimate reality. This is the idea of ultimate reality. If it is a concept. Based on the ultimate realities, you develop a concept. <clears throat> and in Vipassana meditation, this idea of ultimate reality is not going to hinder your understanding. That's the point. That's why in the subcommittee it mentioned, whether you are a developed yogi or a uh, uh, amateur yogi, this idea of ultimate realities, ultimate realities will appear to you as things, sabhi gahevi, things with bodies, things. So, it is not going to hinder your mind. Now, we mentioned this mind image, if you remember, is constructed basically of Sanya, if you remember. Sanya Jat, we mentioned. Why? The nature of our Sanya gives this idea. How we have, what, are, what sort of experiences we have. That is the main reason to create such, a, get such an idea. So, that's why Learning is important in Vipassana. You feed very clear information. So you can get a very clear idea about the ultimate realities. That's what the four aspects of realities are taught before one do uh, meditation. Now, we also mentioned how Chitta Chaitsika taste a certain flavor of the object. So also, we mentioned some pleasant objects which has an, uh, according to the tradition, pleasantness is an inbuilt quality. Some objects with pleasant nature are felt as unpleasant. Some objects with unpleasant nature are felt as pleasant. So where does the change happens? Is the object of in reference is influenced by the chitta? No, it's not influenced by the chitta. Right? So according to the tradition, Object is defined exclusively by pleasant or unpleasant because of its quality, not because of your preference. 
So if someone is tasting a pleasant object as unpleasant, where the change has happened is idea. So in this idea of object of image, he sees the pleasant object as unpleasant. He sees the unpleasant object as pleasant. So there is a great relationship with the taste of the object, flavor of the object, the mind image and the Vedana. They are connected. They are, they are, there is a great relationship. So when we feel an unpleasant object as pleasant, so it means if the tasters see them as a pleasant object. So the mind of image is a pleasant type of an image idea. So that's why the <coughs> pleasant Buddha became an unpleasant object some to some. So the unpleasant experiment became a pleasant object to pigs or dogs. So this is the so then we the person tastes the flavor of the object, we call it flavor of the object. Actually, it's a pleasant flavor, it is felt as an unpleasant flavor. Unpleasant flavor is felt as a pleasant flavor, right? Felt as a pleasant flavor. So it's, this is not a reality, right? This is how he thinks, consideration. Even though I draw it as a mind object, don't think it's a separate thing. This is the idea of the mind. How, he, how the mind looks at the object, how the mind considers the object. Akara paridita kamata. Way it considers. It's not a thing like object. So therefore, this when we uh, this uh, idea normally we say it's constructed by sanya, but this idea also uh, idea uh, of a pleasant object, idea of unpleasant object. With regardless of the nature of the object. Even a pleasant object can be felt as unpleasant with an unpleasant idea. Unpleasant object can be felt with a pleasant idea. So therefore, this mind image is also affected by Vedana. It's not only Sanya. Because based on Sanya, we get the shape or the nature of the object. But object is, the mind object is decided whether it's pleasant or unpleasant based on, based on your name, how you taste it. So Vedana is also, you can call it Vedana, Vedana Jat or if you want, it's also, Vedana is also contributing for this nature of the mind image. How you feel, it matters, right? So then for the Vedana to taste like that, not only Vedana, our ideologies, wisdom, spiritual qualities, many things matter. So this mind image is not only made by Sanya or Vedana, other mentalities also. Other mentalities also contribute for this idea of mind image. Right, so it's, it's very important that <clears throat> if I read the page number 18, second paragraph, when a pleasant object is felt as unpleasant, the subjective experience should be explained as the mind or feeling taste the flavor of the object as unpleasant. It is mentioned in the commentary of Neti Pakarana that due to hallucinations, beings admire or enjoy pleasant objects as unpleasant objects as pleasant. So this is how the tradition would explain that. For example, if I read the previous paragraph even, it will be useful, previous page. When someone experiences a pleasant object as unpleasant, his object of reference is a pleasant object while the mind image is the way mentalities consider the object as unpleasant, is the way it considers. It was stated above that the nature of the mind image or the idea of the mind regarding the object of reference is decided by the nature of the sanya. Moreover, it is also clear that Vedana too plays a role in shaping the nature of this idea of the mind image, of the mind. Anguttara Tika defines the word supanimitta. Supanimitta, how it defines? Ittanti ittakharenama gayamanam rupadi aram. Supanimitta, translation goes. Objects 
which are pleasant when you say subanimitta you have two definitions objects which are actually pleasant or objects which are considered as pleasant are called subanimitta this consideration refers to the mind image the idea of the mind regarding the object of reference therefore an object of reference can be pleasant object in two ways it can be a pleasant object since it has a pleasant object flavor in built quality or because it is considered as a pleasant object because it is considered as a pleasant object so it is still called a pleasant object the same theory is to be followed in defining unpleasant and neutral objects so the the objects have their inbuilt quality there is a different case when it comes to your subjective experience how you look into it also decides whether your object is pleasant or unpleasant right so there is a there are many ways that you can look into this subject i think you got the point then we come to ton types of unpleasant object this is also because it is very practical and uh, it uh, gives a good uh, uh, encouragement for us that's why i put this topic topics of types of unpleasant object now how do we think unpleasant uh, the basic criteria is to decide that object is unpleasant means it has a unpleasant flavor it's a inbuilt quality so it's a unpleasant object at the same time whether the object is pleasant or unpleasant or neutral you can consider the object as unpleasant right you can consider the object as unpleasant because sometimes even an unpleasant object can be <laughs> considered as a pleasant so therefore the first criteria is we are focusing on the object without our influence the objects are pleasant unpleasant neutral so unpleasant object is a object which has a bad taste bad flavor the second way of deciding we decide we consider a object as unpleasant so when we are focusing on our subjective side regardless of the quality of the object we decide object is pleasant we consider a object as unpleasant right so it can be a pleasant object unpleasant object neutral object so these are the two ways to look into it so unpleasant objects are mainly two fold actual unpleasant objects there these are the objects that are not appealing to ordinary humans such as smell of excrements and object of bitter taste katuka rasaramana objects which are considered unpleasant considered up which are unpleasant and considered unpleasant the un, uh, this includes all types of three objects pleasant unpleasant and neutral objects which are considered as unpleasant right which are considered as unpleasant then this unpleasant object considering object as unpleasant is also twofold what is this this is the point important thing sometimes we consider object as unpleasant this unpleasantness affects our mind so what happen our mind get affected affects our emotions our mind get affected and the mind change into domanasa it means it taste the flavor unpleasant flavor or it become rotten or it become dosa mula chitta because domanasa vedana arises in dosa mula chitta only right so sometimes when the object is considered unpleasant that's why domanasa vedana feels the object unpleasant it affects the mind and it becomes rotten or falls into domanasa vedana a second type of thing is now someone considers the object as unpleasant but it is not affected affected for example when you consider a body as a repulsive object you consider this as unpleasant but you are not crying or you are not sad about it sometimes you may get sad but it is uh, wrong consideration you find when you are doing meditation asubha bhavana in the beginning it is upekka sagata mostly meditation is upekka sagata in the beginning that otherwise people will run for meditation right then it doesn't to give meditation doesn't give a pleasant feeling in the beginning right otherwise everyone in the world will be <laughs> meditating okay so meditation normally gives a economic feeling or sometimes a unpleasant feeling something it becomes domanasa for some anyway so uh, in the beginning of our practice mostly it's upekka sagata then when you grow in meditation when you grow in meditation when you grow in uh, concentration these very unpleasant repulsive objects even excrement can be a way your mind can be full of soreness and go to the first jhana right but still the mind is considering this as unpleasant unpleasant 
So this consideration of 5% is not affecting your mind like the Domana Sachita. In the Domana Sachita. So objects can be considered as unpleasant without affecting the mind. Someone consider some person as dangerous to associate, like Devadatta or some, some unvirtuous person. So he consider this person as an unpleasant thing, unpleasant object. But if you consider it with wisdom, you are not get, getting affected by this quality. Then in Vipassana meditation, you consider all the objects that unpleasant means to be abandoned because they are impermanent suffering and non-self. But your mind is not affected by them. So in spiritual progress or with wisdom, you can consider objects as unpleasant. Considering objects as unpleasant without affecting the level of feeling, emotional level. But when it comes to dosa mula chitta, you are still considering the object as unpleasant, but it is affecting your mind. So please consider, when we say the unpleasant object, you can still deal with the object as unpleasant without getting affected. So in the Indriya Bhavana Sutta, if you go to the uh, last paragraph of the page, in the middle line, uh, page, uh, line number 4, at the end, the Buddha mentioned in the Indriya Bhavana Sutta, that if a noble person who has developed Indriya Bhavana can consider a pleasant object, uh, it means non unpleasant, a particular, as unpleasant, such a akangati, a particular, particular sanyi viraya. At that time, the person's mind is not accompanied with Domanasa Vedana. When someone has grown in spiritual practice, he is able to see the true defects of objects and consider them as unpleasant. In Vipassana meditation, yogis consider all the conditioned realities as unpleasant due to their universal defects, impermanence, nature of bringing forth suffering, and non-selfness. So, these are the types of unpleasant objects. I hope it is a useful thing for your uh, practice. Then, uh, another way of classifying objects, if you go into Sutta, Buddha too has classified objects in various few ways. Lobaniya Dhamma, in the word he uses Dhamma, Lobaniya Dhamma or Lobaniya Su, Dhamma Su. I, I made the word Lobaniya Aramana because our topic is Aramana, right? You will not find this Lobaniya Aramana, if you type Lobaniya, you will find those. In Chankya Sutta, Buddha defined the objects as three, four, Lobaniya, Dosaniya, Mohaniya. Lobaniya means attractive to Loba, Dosaniya means bringing anger, dislike, Mohaniya means object of, objects of in, uh, ignorance. Right? The commercial tradition has clarified that it's when it comes to objects, only the mundane realities are objects of loba, dosa, and moha of akusala. Right? Only the mundane objects. Supramundane objects are beyond the range of loba, dosa, and moha. So lobaniya, dosaniya, mohaniya are the mundane realities which appeal for the killers. And also we can sign some terms regarding in the literature, alobaniya dhamma, alobaniya arapana. So the commentary has stated, alo, uh, two examples are given, but you can apply to any of the objects. Alobaniya Aramana is, uh, one Alobaniya Aramana is monkhood, bhikkhu bhava. Monkhood is not appealing like the kingship, for example. <laughs> kingship like someone is a king, another one wants to dethrone him or kill him and get the throne. But no one wants to <laughs> kill a monk and get a monkhood, right? So monkhood is not appealing. <laughs> It's not like the uh, household life, right? Household life, you own a certain house, you own certain property. People want to get into that position. But monkhood is not like that. No? But maybe now these days, because uh, of the position, some, unfortunately, sometimes there are incidents that monks killing other monks. To be true, monks killing other monks to come into some positions, to become the ruler of the temple. There are unfortunate incidents. But that is not regarding the monkhood, that is the lordship of the temple or lordship of the uh, monastery, right? Sometimes quarreling, uh, going for uh, courts, even it have, killing has happened, unfortunately. So, but uh, how to say, the monkhood, the bhikkhu bhava is not appealing like the kingship. King, uh, kingship for a person. So it's called Alobaniya Dhamma. A king considered uh, his kingship is full of troubles, but full of troubles, but if I become a monk, 
no one is going to attack me. So then he became a monk and he became a Pachek Buddha. Right? <laughs> that is the story. Then Alobaniya Atmatu is another thing is Pasukula Chivara. Not like the normal Chivara that we wear. Pasukula Chivara the ragged robes. No one likes it. Even a thief doesn't steal it because its, it's value is gone. So likewise, Alobaniya Vattu means the objects which are not appealing the loba, not attractive to the loba. That is alobaniya, what to. Hey, whatever it is, it's not only the mankud and uh, pansukula chivara, whatever object which doesn't at appeal the attraction is called alobaniya, what to. Then, sadhiya what to means objects that should be believed. What are these objects? Triple gems, the Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha. The phenomenon of Patita Samuppada, Kamma and its results and uh, the happening of rebirth and so forth. These are the objects that should be believed. That is called Sabdeya Vattu. So likewise, these objects can be also clarified. Lobaniya, Dosaniya, Mohaniya, Alobaniya, Sabdeya. But you don't find normally Adosaniya Vattu. These, these words are not common. The thing is, an object is defined in the Buddhism mostly as attractive to Kilesa. Not as reality is attractive to uh, wholesome deeds. So the basic, a very basic type of, uh, seems like a fundamental is objects are attracting the defilements and making the people who beings to wander in the sansara. Objects are not appealing the wholesome idea. For example, someone do a kusala and is born in the uh, divine realm. Objects in the divine world are appealing for loba. It's not appealing for uh, kusala. So, and uh, objects in the Brahma realm are appealing to bhavaraga. Or the, it's not for the uh, specific kusala. There is a spiritual thing. But the thing is, always the kusala vipaka leads to objects, to encounter objects that appeal, that increases your loba. So, uh, they increase the defilements. So, therefore, the, in suttas, Buddha defined the objects as lobaniya, dosaniya, mohaniya. He doesn't define them as alobaniya, dosaniya, amohaniya. So, what happened is, in lobaniya objects, instead of causing loba to happen, you have to suppress the loba and develop aloba in them. That's the point. I'll repeat again. In, in the Theravada tradition, what you have to do is, objects are always attractive to uh, Loba, Dosa, Moha. That's how it's defined. So in these objects which are attractive to Loba, Dosa, Moha, we have to bring the Yoniso Manasikara and suppress this Loba and get detached or start to have loving kindness or wisdom regarding these objects. Right? So that is what we are supposed to do. So we have to abandon the loba dosa moha towards lobaniya dosaniya mohaniya objects. Right? But sometimes you can you may see the kusala the words like kusala ramana are mentioned where, where, when it comes to the javana level, but mostly the objects are defined as lobaniya dosaniya mohaniya. The pleasant object is lobaniya, unpleasant object is loba dosaniya, pleasant, unpleasant neutral objects are uh, mohaniya. Then classification of chittas based on their object. So now we have uh, discussed about the object arabala in detail. Now how, what are, how, how the chittas are classified based on the objects they take. I think most of you have studied this part. Even the diploma students are studying at the moment. Chittas that can take only kamahachara objects. There are 25 chittas. Right? There are 25 chittas. What are they? Two chakku, sota, gana, juha, kaya, vinyanas. Then some particular chittas, two and one panchadvara, vajana chitta. And three santirana, eight mahabhipaka, and one hasitukpala. They have their objects accordingly. I am not going to read them. I think you can understand. So there are 25 chittas which can take only kama vajana objects. Chittas that can take only mahagata objects are six. Then chittas, uh, that is three vinyana chayasana and three nyamasanyana sanyayatana. Chitta that can take only lokutra object is eight lokutra chitta. They take the nibbana as the object. Chitta that can take only panyatya as the object, 15 rupa vachara. And the remaining six arupa vachara. It means three akasana chayasana chittas and three akinchanyasana chittas. Or chittas. All together, 21 chittas take only 
panyati. They don't take other objects. Then we have another classification, chittas that can take kama vachara objects. Chittas that can take kama vachara, uh, kama vachara mahagata and panyati objects except lokuttara uh, dhammas, right? Lokuttara dhammas, except lokuttara dhammas. There are 20 chittas. Two Lakusala Chittas, four Jnana Vipayutta Mahakusala and four Jnana Vipayutta Mahakirya Chittas. They take 81 Lokya Chittas, they are associated with two Chesikas, 20 Rupa and Panyati. Then Chittas that can take all Kama Vachara, Mahagata, Lokutra and Panyati objects except Arahatta Magga and Arahatta Pala and Arahatta Pala and Nibbana. Right? So these are, uh, sorry, yeah, Arahatta Pala and Nibbana. So this is the one chitta. This this classification you will not study in the university because this is based, you are studying based on Abhidhamata Sangaha, which was based on the commentary. In the Sabkama Mula Tika, the Sado, uh, the author has given evidences from the Pathana and showed that the commentarial state was, statement was not accurate. So the Abhinyana Chittas are always unable to take Nibbana, whether it's Kiriya or Kusala Abhinyana. So normally you will see in your studies, you will see that 8.21 Chittas that can take all Kama Vachara, Mahagata, Lokutra, Panyati object except Arahatta, Magga and Pala and you will see 5 Chittas, that's how you have studied normally. So this is divided because Abhinyana Chitta cannot take Nibbana as an object. These 4 Chittas is 8.121 can take Nibbana as the object. So therefore for Jnana Sampayutta Mahakusala Chittas are taking 87 chittas except Parahatta, Magga and Pala. They are associated with two chesikas, 20 Rupa, Nibbana and Panyati. But since the Abhinyana Kusala or Kiriya cannot take Nibbana as the object, it becomes a different group. Chitta, it becomes, it can take the 87 chittas except Parahatta, Magga and Arahatta, Pala. They are associated with two chesikas, 20 Rupa and Panyati. Then if you go to 8.22 and 8.23, if you look in the 8.23 first, normally you study chitta that can take all objects, Kama, Vajra, Rupa, Mahagata, Lokutra and Panyati objects. Uh, they are normally six chittas. Normally you study for Jnana Sampayutta, Mahakusala and Manodwara Vajra Chitta. They can take all types of objects. But you study in a, a, a school normally you add the Kiriya Abhinya also. Since Kiriya Abhinya according to Pathana, cannot take Nibbana as the object. There are direct evidences in the Pathana for that. So as the Abhidhamma uh, students, we have to exclude, we have to mention Abhinyana Kiriya, Kiriya Abhinyana as a separate Chitta which take all the objects except Nibbana. All the objects except Nibbana. That is 89 Chittas, 52 Chesikas, 20 Rupa and Panyati. So according to this list, there are 9 groups. Normally you study 7 groups. There are 9 groups, right? So this is how, according to the tradition, we explain the object range. So in this also we have to understand, uh, this is talking about taking the object with ex objects which have been experienced. So therefore, uh, a person without jhana is unable to observe the jhanas. So a person who has not attained uh, Magapala is unable to observe Nibbana and uh, Magga, Pankapala Chittas. This is not... <coughs> Uh, always we are talking about Vidita Paramatta Dhammas. Vidita Paramatta Dhammas means what you have experienced, not Avidita Paramatta Dhammas. We should not mix it with the Vipassana practice. Then classification of Chetasikas based on their objects. Three Viratis take, three Virati take present and future Kama Vachara objects and Nibbana as their object. Of the Kama Vachara object, Virati is said to be taking the objects upon which one restrains in doing the immoral acts. Sampatarama. It's called Sampatarama. Two Appamanya, Karuna and Mudita only have Panyati objects. Sata Panyati. Yeah. As not only have Panyati beings as their objects. Not only Karuna and Mudita, but Metta and Upekka, Adosa and Tatarda Majatata, when they perform as Brahma Bihara. Not always. When they perform as Brahma Vihara, also cognize the objects of beings. Right? All the Brahma Vihara, not all Adosa and Tatra Machita, when they perform as Mitta and Upekka, they take the Satta Panyati. Issa, jealousy, always have an external object. We never have jealousy toward ourselves, right? Since one does not feel envy on one's own self. As Lady Sado points out, Kukucha always have a past. Kusala Dhammas and Akusala Dhammas as its objects. 
which are called Ekanta Akusala Brahmana. This uh, little bit changed from the traditional uh, knowledge you study. So now we, what we discussed here about the uh, new, uh, Aramana Rasa, when it gets to man gets manifested to Vipakachittas also, there are certain criteria to decide how it gets manifested even to Vipakachittas. Then the relationship between the mind image and the Aramana Rasa and also the Vedana. Sides of unpleasant objects, it uh, means uh, you can consider object as unpleasant but still you can get affected, your mind can get affected of that because of the unpleasantness or you can you can have a very pleasant calm mind and consider the object as unpleasant. Then another way of classifying objects we discussed, Lobaniya, Dosaniya, Mohaniya, Aramana, Alobaniya, Aramana and Sadhya Vattu, that is the information gathering from the literature. Then we classify the chittas based on the objects. No, uh, against the seven uh, traditional classification of seven groups, we introduce nine groups because Abhijnana Chittas cannot take Nibbana as the object. And then also there was a classification about the Chetasika. What are the objects of Chetasika? So these are the points. There are some more points that we can discuss about the Aramana, but I'll conclude this Aramana lesson from here because I'm planning to start the conditionality from the next week. Right. So, uh, there are a few points like how the objects come to the mind, that, uh, objects get contacted with the five senses based on, uh, normally based on five senses with direct uh, contact. Then how the objects get, uh, get uh, upon the mind door, sometimes through the five senses door, with directly the mind uh, objects get into the mind door. Uh, because of our inference, because of our considerations, because of our attainment, because of karma, because of the spirit, the other beings who put brings objects to our mind. So there are more than 15 ways we can say uh, why uh, objects are uh, come, objects appear. Our mind becomes sensitive to certain objects, and also is uh, when the when regarding the five sense doors, object strikes at our mind when it comes to the mind door. This first urge comes from the mind, from the side of the mind, not from the object, right? So mostly the, it's come from the forces of the mind. So there are a few points, aspects that we need to discuss about the object. It's a very huge topic, uh, but uh, I'll not be taking the time. I'll be moving over forward to uh, the conditionality and focus on the lessons such as Kamma and the dependent origination and so forth in our lecture. So if you have any questions, uh, you can raise them. Last week, yes. Eight four five. Two five, yeah. Why you discuss this four separate? Why? Eight eight four in two five. Yeah, fine. You you uh, discuss this four things separate. Because chetasikas, when we say, for example, kusala chittas have the objects of uh, uh, lokiya chitta chetasikas and so forth, right? And Vipak Kiriya Chittas can take all objects. This Karuna Mudita normally appear in Kama Vachara Kusala and Kiriya also. So some can have a wrong idea that when the Karuna Mudita, because Karuna Mudita appears in Kusala Chittas, they can also take Chitta Chetasikas as object. So they are ex a very special Chetasikas. They appear in the mind only when we take the Satta Panya. That's why. To show that. For example, Dosa Mula Chitta can take all the mundane realities. But if it comes to Kukucha or Issa, it cannot take all the mundane realities. So the Chitta with Issa is only internal, external. Chitta with Kukucha is only focusing on past. But if you don't distinguish it separately, students can have an idea because the Issa and Kukucha arise in Dosa Mula Chitta. In the list, Dosa Mula Chitta can take all the mundane realities. So someone can come into idea, Issa and Kukucha also can take all the mundane realities. To, to eliminate this wrong idea, I give separately. And in the Karuna, Mudita and uh, Veda and uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. So they can all have Satta Panyati, right? But they appear in wholesome Kusala Chittas. They appear in Kiriya Chittas. Kusala Chitta and Kiriya Chitta can take mundane objects and also certain uh, supramundane objects. Also supramundane objects, the Kiriya Chitta all supramundane objects. But even though Karuna Mudita arise in Kusala and Kiriya Chittas, they cannot take these objects. They are exclusively when a person is practicing these Brahma Viharas, focusing on Satta Panyati. 
That is why. Why is the, why do you think it's not necessary? Any questions? Right. So then we'll meet on next Saturday. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, so, uh,